Diamond K, Cheaters, Elo Glitches, Utility Meta, Smurfs, Pros Retiring, and Toxic Community. Is Siege dying? More importantly, is it even fun anymore? I have a confession. I uh, haven't been playing much Siege recently. But there's obvious reasons why people don't want to play this game. They made, they made Siege worse? I thought it was going to be better. Actually in the worst state it's ever been. How? How does that happen every time? I can't. I literally can watch the game burn to fucking shits and lick their ass like a fucking dog. See, another thing that's kind of been making Siege, I guess, more dead to uh, more experienced players is the mouse and keyboard problem that they haven't fixed. Ubisoft doesn't fucking care about anyone but these players. This is Siege's current state. Rainbow Six Siege is like no other. There's no other game like it on the market. A game with unique operators, creative gadgets, and a huge skill gap. Only the people who put the time into the game will be good. So many things to learn, such as maps, angles, and strategy. What other game offers this? The answer is none. So what went wrong? Why is Siege on a downward spiral going to the pits of relevantability? Is that a word? How is it even dying if hundreds of content creators are thriving? What could be wrong if Siege has had the most active players this past month? Well, dude. Well, let's just start from the beginning. Rainbow Six Siege was released on December 1st, 2015. The game was definitely a very less complex game with it only having a few operators. And the game offered something different from Call of Duty. At that time, it was Advanced Warfare, and the first reaction of the game was definitely mixed to say the least, but Advanced Warfare had already been out for a year at that point, so there basically was no new Call of Duty. A perfect time for FPS lovers to try a new game. That game was Rainbow Six Siege. The game had a rough release, only having 6,000 active players only 4 months after the game releasing. Ubisoft knew- Dude! Ubisoft knew something had to change and they had to bring new players in, or the game would die only after a couple of months. So they kept improving the game, patches coming out left and right trying to make the game better until they released this. Operation Health was released in May 2017. It was a major stepping stone for Siege because this season they would not be releasing any operators and would be fixing the game's worst unplayable bugs. They also removed Bandit and Jaeger's ACOG and later into the seasons would remove Ash's ACOG. This is the most controversial thing Ubisoft has done to this point, but trust me, it gets a lot worse. The community was split on if this was a good change or not. It balanced the game, but at what cost? Removing ACOGs from people's favorite operators and sake of balancing? Operation Health also came no new content for 3 months which had not helped the growth of Siege. The only bit of content was introducing Alpha Packs. The pro community loved removing the ACOGs while the more casual players hated it. Who was more important to the devs, the casual player or the pros? Siege has always had problems with who to listen to for important changes in the game. The newbies running red dot on everything never touching ranked, or the sweats who played Ash and Jaeger religiously. With such a toxic community no matter what decision is made, the bottom line is people will be mad, especially if the decision is game breaking. Let's fast forward 3 months to August 2017. You wake up and it's a nice summer day. You hit up your friends to see who wants to hang out. No one can, so you hop on your PC. While your PC is booting, you're listening to Sauce It Up by Lil Uzi. Life is good. You get on and see Siege has an update. Good thing it does, because you were hard stuck silver last season. You then hop on the game and instantly look for the new operators and their new abilities. You see two new operators being Legion and Ying. Ying seems a little broken, but then you click on the operator screen. Wait, who's this? To try and take him out. Navy's gonna push in. Redeemer's gonna get a kill to try and lighten the load. And now Chala gets a kill under. He did get sent in. Now it's all down to Chala in a one versus three. He's gonna vault over to the north stairs, get the kill on disguise, and now it's Geo and Laxi playing the doorway, waiting for the peak. But Chala what will not give him the peak. He'll get the shot at it. Geo is Chala! Chala! What a round from Chala against all odds. One versus three will win for his team. Ella or Elsbiata. Oh, that's definitely not how you say it. Bozak was the new operator introduced during Operation Blood Orchid. 
Although not the cover of the new update, boy did she change the meta. She is equipped with the Scorpion Evo 3A1 submachine gun and the FO12 shotgun, which was overlooked, but we'll get to that in a sec. For her secondary, she had the RG15, which has a permanent red dot on it. Basically a one-tap machine. Oh, and impacts. And she was three-speed. Yeah, no big deal. It's not like Ubisoft just introduced the most overpowered operator ever. Well, maybe not ever. I'm foreshadowing. But what made Ella so overpowered? Well, other than the fact that her gun had 50 bullets, absolutely no recoil, her ability was placing four traps. Yes, Ubisoft gave her four traps. And when you got hit by these traps, you were so slow, you basically were frozen. Even Yardy could gun you down. Shout out Exit. And the effect lasted seven seconds. Did I mention that her gun shot at 28 damage per bullet with a 504 DPS, which in comparison is faster than Bandit's MP7 and the same as IQ's AUG, and had zero recoil, and her shotgun was broken and still to this day, but no one cared because of the Scorpion. But this is just the start. The introduction of Ella showed that Ubisoft does not have a clear understanding of what made the game fun in the first place. Creative and original operators with special abilities is what makes this game, yes. But what abilities those operators have controls whether or not the game is playable. It doesn't matter how cool the new gadget looks. If it's broken, there's a problem. Skill gap is what makes or breaks Siege. If everyone can now run and gun with an operator and takes no skill to play, that's what hurts this game. Why do you think everyone loves the Season 1 operator so much? Everyone countered everyone and the gadgets took skill to use. If you give a bronze as Ella's loadout and say, here you go, 9 times out of 10 they outfrag everyone on their team. The funny thing is, we haven't even talked about universal gadgets. Rainbow Six Siege was the most searched for a term in February 2018 since the launch of the game back in 2015. It was the end of Operation White Noise, and the new operators that came out the season previously had already been balanced and toned down to the point where they weren't as overpowered. The new operators introduced were Dokebi, Zofia, and Vigil. Two out of the three had universal abilities. Let me define universal ability. This basically means that with a click of a button, the whole lobby is affected by the ability. Now this isn't necessarily a bad thing. Universal abilities can be good if some sort of skill is involved, and that is a big if. Vigil being a good example of this, with his ability involving timing and when and when not to use his ability, plays a big part in his gadget. Dokebi is the opposite, with her ability involving nothing that takes skill but just clicking a button and the whole other team now has a loud ringing phone to which they can now know exactly where the defenders are. The reason I consider this period of time the peak of Siege is because this was when the game was the most enjoyable for both pro and the casual players, minus tower existing. I had the most fun during this time because the game was balanced, fun, and addicting. But things are about to change for the worst. Operation Chimera was introduced in March 2018, and well, let's just say it didn't end very good. Outbreak was a special event that basically was a zombies game mode in Siege, which was actually really fun and overall a great response from the community. With a new season means new operators of course. You would think that since the whole Ella experience, Ubisoft would tone down how good the operators are coming out and just buff them over time, right? Right? Ubisoft did the exact opposite of what everybody expected them and released one of the most broken ops since Nerfbeard's 800 HP shield. Lion and Finca came out with a new update and, well... You should know, you can go where you wanna go, I can take you there. Oliver Lion Flament was single-handedly the most broken operator ever in Rainbow Six Siege history. So broken, in fact, that some pro teams put in a gentleman's agreement that they both won't pick Lion during the match. Lion's class consisted of the V308 AR, 
Twitch's DMR, and Doc's shotgun, a pretty basic attacker class. But Lion was anything but a basic operator. He was a game changer. His ability literally gave him wall hacks. No joke. When activated, the defending team all had to stand still for 5 whole seconds. If they did move, they would have a red outline on them for the attacking team to see them. I really wonder who thought this was a good idea. To activate his ability, you guessed it, you click a button and then impact the whole other team. Why Ubisoft? Just why? So why wouldn't the devs listen? It's like they have a mind of their own and just do what they want not what the community wants. Finko is introduced with a universal ability, giving her whole team a recoil buff when activated. She isn't very good considering you were already pulling down before activating her ability, and honestly just hurt you controlling the recoil rather than helping. The counter argument to Lion is just stand still? which I find this point to be really stupid in most situations. It's almost impossible to just stand still for 5 seconds in Siege, especially during post-plant scenarios. So how do they fix them? They eventually released the patch, removing Lion to see through walls and making it a jackal scan, which made him way less powerful, still an overall okay pick. So what happens next? Does Siege die? Not exactly. 21 minutes until I got go, so I told that girl I'm gonna slaughter me. Let's fast forward to today. I'm obviously not going to cover every single season from Operation Khmer to now. That would take me, like, literally forever. Siege kept introducing operators, some good, some bad. Ubisoft didn't release any more universal gadget operators since Operation Khmer, thank god, and have learned their lesson from those kind of operators. But is it too late? Rainbow Six Siege is becoming less and less searched by the day with a steady decline, but Active players on Siege showed 12% increase in the last 30 days. So which one is it? Well, I think the game is becoming less popular, but the reason for the player increase is I think that people that took a break are coming back to the game to play it. So that brings us back to the main question of this video. Is Siege dying? The answer is yes and no. Yes, I think the game is not growing in the new player base, but no, because there will always be the try-hard player base. It's hard to start playing this game. That's why I think so many people quit. They either don't take it seriously, or just don't want to. When you start playing ranked, you have to try hard every game unless you'll lose, and then that can get tiresome. Another thing that's killing the game is the community. Not only is the community the most toxic I've ever been a part of, it's never going to improve. It's only gonna get worse. Everybody mouse and keyboards on console, and it's so bad. Like actually, like really bad. I'm just glad I stopped playing on console. There's ELO glitches going around and the hackers on PC is at all time high. That is Siege's biggest problem. If Ubisoft can't fix these problems then this game will die. We're just waiting for someone to make a game that takes everything good from Siege and calls it something else. I promise you everyone would leave Siege in a heartbeat. I still want to end this video on a good note though. Siege has been my favorite game for the past four years. I have hope that things will get better for Siege, even with the Tox community. And that, I'm done. And if you did, stick around for the whole video, but I really doubt you did. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe, because it really helps me out. And I'm not really sure if I want to do more of these video essays, but um, if this gets a good response, then I'm definitely going to do more. But yeah, hope you guys have a nice day. 20 more minutes and two more. 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 Yeah, I am not slow. Because you want me, because I got the dope. Pass that girl right on my freaking coat. He passed me Humphrey, so they